Hi there, Cloak Fiend here again, and today I'm going to be taking you through my little adventure trying to fix what I think is a problem in every single Mars Pro unit on the market, but that's just my opinion. It's all to do with the grid LED array or the lens or the support not being low enough and close enough to the lens to the um, LEDs basically projecting an image which results in lines or dots hence creating a print that has errors in it pretty much every single time regardless the first Mars did not suffer from this problem but in my opinion if you've got a Mars Pro you have a problem and um, I'm surprised that no one's even brought this up on any YouTube channels I understand you know you, you might be kind of I don't know, offending Elegoo or something if you get free printers or not anyway. But at the end of the day, Elegoo should have really kind of either had a recall on these units or at least openly discussed this problem because it seems to be that even I and loads of other people did not even realise the printer had this problem. Because um, if, I, if I knew about it, I would have got the original Mars. So uh, without further ado, I'm, I'm going to follow a, a video that Elegoo themselves sent me to how to take the printer apart and take out the support kind of the support section that holds the kind of lenses that the LED shoot through to essentially light up the LCD display with the UV light. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting for my new parts from Elego as we speak, but because I've had this problem, I can't print anything because it just ruins all my prints. So um, I'm a perfectionist and I want a perfect print. The Mars, the first Mars gave you perfect prints. Although it might have had some issue with the linear rail I hear, whatever. You, you didn't have this weird problem with the grid. And my main issue is if the Saturn and the Jupiter also have that problem, they, 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 then they're also going to have this problem that this printer has. So, um, you're going to have hot spots and you're going to have grid lines. So anyway. Without further ado, I'm just going to show you what um, me and a couple of other people have been discussing. A big shout out to Peter and Chris from the Elegoo forums. Um, but anyway, um, you can go on there, have a read about it if you bought one of these printers or if you're just interested. Or if not, you can watch this video and see what I'm doing and laugh at me, whatever. Anyway, without further ado, what I'm essentially going to do... I'm just going to show you the first screen of this video just to show you what you need. You need a... Actually, I'm not going to bother. So you, you're going to need a 2mm and a 2.5mm hex screw, Phillips screwdriver and a marker pen. So I'm just going to follow the tutorial video that they sent me now and I'm going to take this thing apart. So this is the video you're going to get sent. I just downloaded it to watch it offline because I can't be bothered constantly going on the internet and I'm in my garage. So um, without further ado, this is what you're going to need. Tools you will need. So here, a 2mm hex wrench, 2.5mm hex wrench, Phillips screwdriver and a marker like I said. And I'm just going to fast forward all of this. Uh, I'm sure you're going to be sent this link if you have a problem. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, fast forward myself on doing this one and get to the sanding. Actually, I've just kind of rushed into this a bit and I'd like to mention um, what you need to do is do a little UV test first to see the lines because that's what I'm kind of going to go into and that's what I'm going to be comparing. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to try and get the grid lines as far from indistinguishable from the rest of the kind of light as we can. Basically try and make the whole thing one uniform light as opposed to seeing the grids because if you see the grids on there you're going to see them on your prints. So I'm just going to plug this in now and do a kind of a vat cleaning thing which basically lights up the whole thing and then put a piece of paper over it and then I'll see what that looks like. So from the menu what we're going to do is we're going to run um, in the tool set and there's a, here a tank clean. So click on tank clean and I've set mine to 5 and then we're going to shine a light for 5 seconds which covers the entire UV area and then we're going to look for those grid lines because essentially we're going to sand away and as much support material as we need until those grid lines essentially diminish so um, let's do that now well, I hope I'm in focus but you'll see so yeah we want to get rid of all these lines basically so um, I'm going to take it apart and sand it down so that's our mission to get rid of those lines and those dots so then we're told to mark this one I think one two three and then um 
<coughs> we've got to pull this black one out and then take the tape off that one. So I'll just do that now. So we just got to unscrew this fan unit now. And that's it. We're in. We're in the money. So that's that thing there. All right. So now um, this is what we're going to be getting into. This th we're going to be sanding these parts down, which is essentially going to be bringing the this whole platform closer towards the the the, the light source. So without further ado, I'm just going to unscrew these screws, this one, this one, and the other two on the other side, and then bring the whole lot closer. Mm. All right, so um, time to get sanding. All right, now, because we're going to want to sand down all the bottom legs evenly, you're going to need to make sure this is flat. Now, obviously, this is a rostrum camera, so I know that this base is flat. However, this mat may not be flat, but I don't want to sand directly against the rostrum surface, which is ruined with acid already. But So what I would suggest is get some glass. I just happen to have some glass sheets here that I was going to make a little uh, a filming kind of box with. So um, I'm just going to lay that down, and then I'm going to put a piece of sandpaper on the glass and then um, grind this quite lightly for a while until I grind about 0.8 millimeters of plastic off the bottom here. Now, I hear a sweet spot is about 0.9, but I wouldn't recommend sanding off too much, otherwise you're gonna have to start adding stuff underneath just to raise it back up. Even though that is probably a lot easier than constantly sanding down bit by bit by bit, then unscrewing it and rescrewing it endlessly. But I'm gonna play it safe and um, probably unscrew it and rescrew it probably four or five times knowing me and um, yeah and go from there so I'm just going to kind of crudely measure off about I don't know half a centimeter half a millimeter using just a regular ruler another thing is try not to touch this lens I mean I can see I've already touched in a couple of spots I can see it's slightly cloudy but I'm going to go over it with an, a microfiber cloth later and clean it but whatever you do don't spray anything onto that because you're going to scratch it now I'd like to add if you're going to do sanding don't do it near all of this other stuff because you just could get dust everywhere so I'm just going to take this away and do it and just over there anyway what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and have a look and measure this point off here I don't know if you can see it there but anyway um it looks around 2 2.4 so what I'm it's just going to be so difficult for me to measure off like point ten a tenth of a, a millimeter essentially so um I'm just going to kind of go by eye I wouldn't be worried about taking off too much because then you can just put in pieces of paper which are about point 0.1 millimeter to kind of raise it back up again the main thing is that you sand each leg equally, otherwise you're going to get lopsided effect. So um, make sure you do that flat. So I'm literally just going to sand it. This is um, 120 grit paper. It was off a roll, but because it's been in my folder for a while, then um, it lies fairly flat and it's on glass anyway. So I'm, I'm just going to go and literally sand this. All right, I'm gonna see what that looks like. Now I'd just like to add, if, you've, if you're if you doing what I'm doing, it's being a bit lazy and not taking the lens off, then obviously when you're sanding it, some dust might get inside. So um, again, take your air duster and spray it all out before you put it back together. Cause in case it's perfect, then you don't wanna to have to take it apart again, just to notice this, just cause there's dust inside. So 
So yeah, just keep an eye on it, make sure it's all good, clean it with a microfiber cloth and then put it back. Now we've got the fun of putting it back all together. Alright, so first I'm going to screw this on, I don't know what that is. That's so as you can see, uh, I forgot to, to put that on the inside. I'm not going to bother screwing it down. I'm just going to chuck it in the cupboard and see what it looks like. So um, here's the first test. Uh, roughly, I think it's 1.6, 1.7 millimeters in height that stand rather than 2.4. We'll see anyway. So the first thing to note is that it turns on, which is nice because it's completely, um, you know, not put together properly, which obviously if you're not comfortable doing this, don't do it screw it all together nicely but let's do the test now so I'm gonna go to tool get my piece of paper I'm gonna chuck that on top there and um, go to tank clean put it back to 10 seconds so we can have a little judgment let's make it 15 and then have a look all right here goes So it's a bit better, isn't it? Can't see as much of the, the grid lines as before. Right, here we are again. Um, just messed up a bit. I thought it was all, all over because um, I didn't plug in the display correctly. Anyway, here goes, so that's that. Here goes, let's have a look. Hmm. Less grids, that's for sure. I think we can go more. All right, so this is my third time now that I'm just gonna do a little bit more on this side because I feel like I didn't do enough on this side here. And um, yeah, I'm gonna do about a couple of seconds and I'm gonna drag it back in. All right, that's it, I'm going with that now better or for worse. Alright, here's my third and final test, or fourth test. I'm happy with that. I think I might have sanded a bit too much off, but I'm happy. So here you go, the results. We got the unsanded version of the lens array here, and then we got the sanded version of the lens array here. So um, as you can see, there's a quite a drastic improvement of quality. All of those kind of dots where um, you have those hot spots, they're completely gone. There is still some faint lining, but um, the majority is kind of toned way down. So um, it's almost bearable now. But um, I got an email from Elegu telling me that it actually is a design, uh, not a design flaw, but it's a design limitation of having that grid. So for all those people saying that it's not going to affect, you know, their prints. Um, I got an email actually telling me that yes, I'm afraid it will affect your flat prints or all, you know, any kind of flat or kind of straight edged prints, it will affect it. You know, obviously some printers are going to be better than others because they're going to be naturally lower or higher, but an actual email from themselves does state that this is the case. So, um, Unfortunately, um, whatever, I thought that they would be perfect like the Mars original one, but they're not. So um, if you want to get kind of prints that are almost equal to the Mars, then you're going to have to sand the legs down like in this video or reach out to Elegoo and kind of maybe hope that the new parts will do it for you. But um, from speaking to a couple of people, the parts haven't made any difference. Um, either way, that's what this one looks like. So you can see her face like that. <clears throat> and this is the face here, so um, I'll try and get it look the same. So um, you can see that those lines are gone. I mean, as well up here, you've got a subtle line there, but that's more of a, one of these weird moiry reflections. I don't think... I can't even really feel that. But on this side, it's quite horrifically bad. See, it goes all the way up into a crown. And this one, not so much. And also the top, if you look at the top here, there's no, it's pretty perfect. The top is entirely perfect. And then if you look at this one here, well, you know, you can see that weird line there. So there you have it. If you want to print without those weird lines and without the dots, you have to do a bit of sanding. 
All right, I'm just going to do a direct comparison where I'm going to try and put them in exactly the same place and then do a little blend on them. So here you can read it for yourself from Elegoo, there you go. And it says here, and grid lines appear on the screen which can have a significant impact on models that print flat classes such as photos but if you are printing 3d models such as anime characters it will not be affected so there you have it from elegu themselves they're saying it will affect stuff so um this printer will affect models you know there there is a, a design flaw in it and that's the pretty much the bottom line and this is the design flaw here and to me this is almost an anime character and it's not printing very well so um there you have it however with my little hack you can get it a lot better so yeah there you have it that's all i've got to say um hope you've enjoyed the video if you've got these weird lines then um definitely have a go at sanding it down a bit and if you're worried about each leg kind of not being the same height you can also you can always go on the internet buy some kind of those calipers that i think that measure and then you can measure them all afterwards to make sure they're the same height if you like the video subscribe join my patreon and i'll see you later Peace.